Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week eight, lecture four. In this week, we are in particularly looking at the well types, the pump types, and how to access water from the ground. The previous classes, we also looked at how you construct wells and how do you extract the water. So for the extraction of water, pumps are very necessary. In this class, we will look at the pumps and also how or what type of energies are available for groundwater pumping. Before that, I would like to show you something called well interference. This is very important when we have multiple wells or different type of wells nearby. In the previous class, we looked at dug wells, driven wells, and then bore wells. However, in the last part, we also looked at how we have dug plus bore well, which means you have a dug well and underneath that you have a bore well. What you see in this figure is a dug well and a bore well separately spaced, not as a dug come bore, but they are nearby. Okay, the ground surface is GS, the pump wells are or pumping wells are PW. And this well, which has become dry, that is why people would go to the bore well. So this is a classic scenario in India, where you have a dug well, which is being used prolongedly and maybe unsustainably. And so the water level fell down. Once the water level falls down, the farmer would invest in a bore well, not a dug well, because already the dug well is dry which means there is no water for further extraction in the shallow aquifer, okay? Let me just draw the shallow aquifer so that we know where we are. So this part until where your um, dug well is, maybe we could assume it is the shallow aquifer and the unconfined aquifer. Below that goes the deeper aquifers or the confined aquifers. And that is where the bore well runs. If you see, it runs throughout uh, until um, a long distance. And maybe it is to a confining layer that you see on the bottom. So the question here is, why do these wells go dry first? And is there an interference between the wells? Or is a farmer safe when another farmer puts a bore well nearby? Let's first take the classic example of all this is one farmer, okay? Only one farmer, and he or she is having only a dug well, okay? So this is a cl classic scenario. So initially there is water, and every year since it's being used, and maybe the, the current year does not have enough rainfall or enough water to recharge. So you might have good rainfall, but if you're ex exorbitantly using it, using it unsustainably, then you run out of water. And that is what is happening. So if you look at this uh, scenario, you are actually depleting the water or the recharge is not low, is not high. So what happens is water just keeps on seeping into the well and then the well just recharges or discharges it outside the well in terms of it goes from one well to the other well or it goes into the land. So this is a water loss to the well and well goes dry. Okay, This is the first scenario, three months the well went dry. What will the farmer do? The farmer will just abandon the land and say, okay, next time I will make sure the water is available or the farmer goes to an extreme measure to put a bore well, which happens normally to save a crop. So you have crops here growing. So you want to save the crop. So 
you are actually investing in a bore well, which is not going to take a lot of land. You can look at how much uh, land it's taken. Okay, so now what has happened is this uh, bore well will keep on decreasing the water table. And because of that, your shallow aquifer recharge won't happen much. So even though you are having it in your same field, uh, now your shallow aquifers are not, this dug well is not going to be recharged optimally because you are pumping at a very, very high rate. And normally when you put a bore well and you see a lot of water, uh, people just keep on uh, using it um, without sustainable measures like drip irrigation or something. At one point, it just goes dry. And when this wall also goes dry, your dug well is not going to recharge that fast because all the water that could have come from your deep aquifer recharge may not come now. So for example, like this, this is the first case. The second case is a very interesting case. It's because your land is very small in India, land holding size per farmer is approximately one hectare, if we go back to the notes. So what happens here is um, in between your field, okay, or between farmers, there'll be multiple wells. So these wells cause an interference in your dug well. And that is what we're going to see how one well influences the other well. We've also seen this in the induced recharge, uh, but there is a zone of interference which depends on the aquifer. First is what type of aquifer you have. Uh, and then it depends on the power of the pump, how fast you can re, uh, take the water out. And sec third is the amount of water in the aquifer, which is also a property of the aquifer uh, and the pumping speed. So uh, the remaining water very much uh, influencing the other wells. So initially this was your water level. Okay, then what happened? The dug well um, is there and it was having a slight water thickness of H1. Or just let's keep it one here. Uh, and then these guys were having a big water table of two. Okay, now what has happened is you have different hydraulic heads in terms of accessible hydraulic head. Because here the well runs deep, so you can take all this water. However, here the dug well, it is very shallow. So the thickness of water in the well is very small. So what has this happened is if this guy is pumping Q and this farmer on both sides, or maybe the same farmer is pumping at a very high rate of Q, uh, then what happens is your water table falls down as a cone of depression because your, dis your pumping rate is much, much faster than your natural recharge rate. Your natural recharge is what goes into your dug well. For example, you have a dug well and then you have a pump. When the pump is taking the water out, the dug well goes dry. However, in a bore well, not only the well goes dry, but the suction, the pull of this... Um, pump would cause water to move faster into the well. Okay, So that is why you see, because of this pumping, initially the water table was this high, it went to a del H. Okay, And then from there, what happens is it doesn't only take the water which is in its surrounding, but also pulls the dug well water before it was dry. You could now, I'll erase all these things to just uh, sh show you the initial dash lines. The initial dash lines were the initial water level. And then when you start pumping, and here the water may be pumped or may not be pumped, it is not relevant here, because what has happened is this water table goes down, not because of the pumping of the dug well, but because this pump has been pushing, pulling water and same as the other pump bore well from a very deep aquifer. Why it is in the deep aquifer and the connection is there with the shallow aquifer, water will still be pulled. Remember I said most of these bore wells do not have a casing. It's too expensive to have casing, which means all this area is available for this water to push into the well and then get uh, sucked out due to pumping. 
this constant pumping this high pressure pumping would mean that water would be pulled out of this aquifer at a greater speed because of that not only the aquifer depth decreases the water depth decreases but also it pulls the water table associated with another well so from here the water comes down and that is why your water table comes down how and the most critical part is it comes down below the base of the dug well once it goes below the base of the dug well there is no recharge the dug well becomes dry so when you go to field when you see all these big dug wells very dry you should look around and see if there is any bore well which is pumping at a very high rate so this connection between the shallow uh, intermediate and the deep aquifers is called interference and if there is a impermeable layer let's say for example if there is an impermeable layer here then this pumping will not affect this pumping or this water level which is called non interference of wells and it is separated however there is no zero flow and as i said this is not cased so when you're not casing the well then and you're pumping the water here in the uh, deep uh, bore well then all this water can also drain and because of the draining the water level moves down throughout the entire area it's not only in your well the water goes down but throughout the entire area it goes down thereby going below your dug well and once it goes below your dug well you are done for good ground water for shallow ground water so this is the classic case in india where dug wells are going dry not only because of your recharge a slow process which is because of your rainfall climate change not only because your farmer as of as my dug well i am not exorbitantly using i am not using too much of ground water but because of pumping of others my well water has gone down and if this farmer so this is a and c if farmer b has a bore well then it's not much uh, affected because when the dug well goes dry he she will turn on the bore well and then this water is taken up he or she i'm saying male farmer or female farmer uh, i kindly request you all that uh, please also use when you say farmer it is not males alone there's a lot of female farmers in india um, especially during uh, the phases where uh, some farmers migrate to cities for better jobs or foreign countries for uh, labor work so the females are left behind to take care of the farms uh, and that is why fa female farmers are also important okay so now if farmer b has also a bore well then interference still happens but at least uh, he she will have water in the area because they will get what their own share of the water beneath the ground uh, table okay whereas these guys if this well, well is not present uh, the farmer a and c are actually pulling the water from uh, the in, in between farmer and also lowering the water table thereby not giving access to ground water so here the access to ground water is cut because you are blocking kind of like blocking a pipe supply through um, uh, some blockage or cutting the tube and saying no water for you so that is what is happening you lower it below the water table and at one point the water does not enter the dug well and thereby don't recharge so be careful uh, when you do some field works uh, uh, it will be very interesting to see how the uh, dewatered zone behaves so from initial level to a level because of not pumping in your well but also the surrounding well and what determines the radius as i said what determines the radius of influence it is uh, dealt by the pumping speed it is dealt by the depth of the bore well and is it cased or not uh, and also most importantly the hydraulic conductivity of the medium 
if the medium is very permeable it's it's easy for water to move then you will be pulling a lot of water otherwise uh, if it is like cracks and hydrologic fractures um, then you won't have much of um, connection so your pumping may not be influenced okay so this is how you should also keep a monitoring well wherein you would keep a monitoring well which is capturing all these dynamics rather than keeping a monitoring well here and not even in the full uh, uh, aquifer width saying that no no my water level is okay because it is not influenced by this interference so the interference should be a good term during monitoring but during actual benefits of groundwater you should try to uh, reduce the interference or if your interference uh, is there communally use groundwater like talk to each other and then use groundwater uh, communally so that everyone benefits if it's a loss everyone takes a loss and the net loss on per person is less however if it is uh, a profit then everyone shares the profit equitably so this is what is needed in communal farming and for communal groundwater use okay let's move on so this also uh, brings us to the most important part of um, uh, this week's uh, one of the most important part of this week's lecture which is importance or uh, understanding the importance of the hydraulic pumps or groundwater pumps these groundwater pumps determine how much water you access and are you accessing your area water or water from underneath another farm okay and therefore it is very important to look at these definitions and see how it fits what type of water pumps are there and how they work okay so uh, in india there are uh, mostly three types of pumps there's different ways you can um, create types of these pumps i'll use something which is very similar to how we started the lecture uh, this week about the wells what did we say the different types of wells are there we said domestic agriculture and industry same way we will be looking at pumps for domestic use pumps for um agricultural use and pumps for industrial use high pressure pumps okay so what you see here is something uh, uh, where a hand pump is working and it is purely manual and this is the first set of uh, pumps where it is hand and treadle pumps uh, hand is where you everyone would have seen at least in these days rather than using it you would have seen you pump uh, using a handle you push up and down and that drives a system to go up and down into the well kind of an architecture so here you have the pump base and the cylinder where the cylinder has water and the water is being pulled up when you push the piston down the piston or the handle uh, and that opens these valves you can see the valve opening and this valve in the uh, pump handle opening and so it brings up the water releases it through the uh, mouth or output valve it's a very simple design not much uh, energy used except your um, uh, manual uh, hand power uh, and uh, it has been very successful uh, to prevent losses also uh, because uh, you don't have leakages much because only when you pump you take the water and then you uh, use it um, you capture it in your uh, buckets or vessels and then take it home so this is for domestic use and um, a very small low energy use the other thing is it is low energy requirement it is at a shallow aquifer which means the aquifers uh, should be very shallow to bring water from the underground aquifer easily using a manual power it also has to mention that the water level is very high in the aquifer so you can easily tap it in some systems you could see that you have a pipe running underneath these uh, 
uh, wells okay so a pipe would be running underneath and then water supply would be going and this water supply can be pulled up using these pistons uh, that was given uh, in before the uh, pipe supply was introduced to tap um, a supply or tap to each house or each street you would have a hand pump for each uh, see uh, each um, street and those people would line up and then when the release of water happens in the pipe you are able to access it okay so uh, the next one you would see today is the treadle pumps which is also very common in shallow aquifers um, and how it works is either you pedal it so instead of pushing by the hand you pedal up down up down and the lever goes in and pulls the water up and then goes down pulls it up goes down so similar fashion but instead of pushing it by hand you would be pushing it by your legs you you have to walk up and down it's a simplified version and those who could not do the you know uh, uh, pushing the piston which sometimes may take time you can just walk on these uh, treadles um, and this is similar to your uh, treadle instrument in your exercising gyms you have these in the gym where you would stand up stepper or we call it and goes up down up down and then it pulls up the water in this case there are multiple designs for hand pumps and treadle pumps okay uh, you could look at ide and other uh, sources to get more about these pumps okay Moving on, the next uh, set of pumps we'll be looking at is low pressure suction pumps. And these are the ones which are used in shallow aquifer irrigation fields. Okay, so these are suitable for irrigation fields, groundwater for agriculture, uh, and it is only or mostly for your um, shallow to slightly borewell configurations. This requires some excess energy which cannot be done by hand so you go to your diesel or electric pumps nowadays you also have a solar but uh, i would show you some figures which actually says that electricity is the biggest consumer or biggest supplier for these uh, pumps the irrigation pumps across india uh, followed by your diesel pumps uh, and then solar etc so you still are using diesel powered pumps or fuel powered pumps um, to extract the water and one such technique is the centrifugal system where it spins and creates a lower head compared to your uh, head in the well. So then what happens water flows from a high head to low head and because your pump is creating that um, low head at a very faster rate. The water would come from down to up and then starts to be used it's kind of tricking the system uh, that the head is lower in the top whereas normally with elevation your head is at the um, highest but uh, the centrifugal pump actually uh, works on a physics principle to trick the system uh, and say that uh, now the head is lower and water comes up there are other suction pumps also where it creates a suction and then you pull it like your straw mechanism that you have when you drink you suck water out so same way you have suction pumps most importantly to reduce your centrifugal uh, pumps energy of these pumps uh, energy requirement sometimes the pump is not kept at the land but also inside the water or also in between the well okay uh, so in terms of um, clarifying it in terms of this is your land uh, and instead normally the pumps are placed here a pump house is there you turn on the pump and then it waters the feed uh, but in some cases what happens is your uh, pump can be placed in between the water level for example this is your water level it can be placed in between the water level and land or inside the water when you place it inside the water, there is tremendous energy consumption um, losses reduced 
and the electricity bill is much much reduced however there are some other issues uh, the quality of the um, fuel um, and also how the water is pulled uh, there are some um, issues in uh, putting it in a submersible sediments etc so it depends where you are what type of aquifer you are using and how you would like to discuss uh, the groundwater pumping okay so there is centrifugal pumps and then we would uh, look into uh, other pumps uh, quite soon okay the next pump if we move on is the high pressure suction pumps so these are high pressure it has uh, built a pressure and that pressure sucks the water um, out okay um, and suitable for industrial use electric power mostly electric power uh, it is very suitable for industrial use where they use mega mega water budgets uh, compared to your agriculture and compared to your uh, domestic use. Remember agriculture use is uh, if you weight it by the crop area and how much water we use, it is smaller than the industry. However, because of the number of pumps and the number of acreage that is covered by groundwater, we call groundwater as a second highest consumer of water, whereas the private agencies and industries, uh, factories, those wells are considered lower than the agricultural water use. So there is there could be some issues on understanding the water budgets at industry level. For agriculture, it's easy, right? You can have water on the field, you can calculate the area of the crops and also understand the crop type to get how much water has been pumped. That is not the same for industries. Industries, you don't know the efficiency of how they use water. Uh, there is no return flow. For example, you apply water on the ground in the field, it can go back to the aquifer. That doesn't happen in the industry. So uh, it is very important to understand these facts and how the government supports these multiple schemes. Um, we will get into the uh, energy consumption of these uh, pumps and how the government supports these kind of pumps in the next lecture. I would see you um, in the next lecture, but please have time to look at the different pumps because in the next lecture, I will be showing the distribution of energy across India and what type of subsidies are given for supporting these pumping activities. Uh, I'll just give a quick a teaser uh, of the next slide, which I'll be starting to discuss uh, from um, uh, the week, uh, I'm sorry, from the next class. Yeah, this is what I'll be discussing. What are the key uh, energy types uh, available? Uh, and why is there a different pattern between the states? Okay. Think about these. Uh, I would like you to think uh, before the next class rather than me jumping into these uh, descriptions uh, so that it makes you think. Now you have uh, seen how uh, the water interference can happen, how the pump uh, regime can uh, can in influence their neighboring land. Um, but most importantly, now you know um, uh, what type of pumps are there for the different key uh, wells we discussed, domestic irrigation and uh, industry, and what type of uh, mechanism or energy that is needed. Once you know the energy need, then think about government plans, which we said we will discuss in this week's lecture. With this, I will stop today's lecture. I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.